Hey guys, this is Brian, and uh, now I get to show you how to add events to your calendar. And on this one here, I have, uh, this is our choir calendar, and when you click over it, we have the starting time, end time, uh, and we have some different descriptions we can do to it. If you're the administrator, you're going to see, you know, edit these dates and, and uh, give you a little bit more options. The, the uh, normal user will see everything above this line here. And uh, it shows you where it's at, locations, even a map. If I click on that, it's going to pull me into Google Maps. And uh, even to a website if there's a specific link that's tied into the event. So, <clears throat> as you also notice here, I have choir practice here, here, here. There's one there and there and there. So that means we can automatically uh, make sure we have choir practice added in on uh, in specific dates and it repeats itself. So first thing you need to do is log in and that of course I've something I've already done here and as you have noticed over here in this my calendar section we have something called add an events now before we get into this uh, it's best that you go ahead and have locations set and it's also best that you have categories set um, that way it makes the adding an events a lot easier to to happen right so here we go Add an event. The first thing it's going to do is uh, ask for an event title. And this one here, we're going to do band practice. Okay. Now, uh, here is the event description, and this is kind of the long one. So, this is a long description. All right. And of course, you could put anything up there, but uh, you can add an image if you want to add an image to it. Uh, here is in a, a short description. There we go. Event host. Now your event host, this is the author. So I am registered under CCC. And so that's my author name. And so we're going to keep it as that. E event category, I can choose between general, leadership, music, or youth. In this case, we'll choose music. Also, we can do an event link. That way, if you click uh, to something like um, this is, uh, let's, let's send this to... Uh, Google. Okay, so anytime they click on the link, it's going to go to this, um, or anytime they click on the event, it'll have this optional to click on this for more information. In case you're doing something that uh, that has uh, an external website, or you can even point it to another web page within your own site. So anyway, this uh, gives you a link option, and uh, the start date on this we're going to going to practice on Sunday. So here's my Sunday calendar. We'll start on the fifth. And uh, we're going to start band practice at 4 p.m. <coughs> now this one event is going to end on the same day. Um, and so it's going to last for one hour. So it'll end at 5 right here, okay? So 5, and it shows us it's going to last for one hour. So we got band practice starting here at 4 p.m. It's going to end on the same day at 5 p.m. We can even stretch this out for multiple days if we need to. That way it ends you know, somewhere out in there. Um, but for this case, we're only going to have this one event um, between 4 and 5. Okay. Now the repeats is not the uh, add another occurrence. All right. So we can have is the same event maybe happening maybe on Mondays and Tuesdays or uh, maybe Mondays and Wednesdays. So it, uh, that way we don't have to create a new event for Sunday and then create another event for Wednesday. So this allows us uh, full options, right? Now, uh, repeats here. Now we do want this to repeat, and we want this to repeat for every Sunday. Uh, and we're going to leave it as zero because we're going to leave it as indefinite. So we can choose daily, daily weekdays only, weekly, biweekly, day of the month, uh, and another date of the month. And so we're going to choose weekly. All right. Uh, and then we can have this as open registration or closed registrations. In this case, we'll leave it do not, does not apply. Um, and then we get to choose the, uh, the preset location. This, this time we're going to choose the choir room because we're going to practice our band in the choir room. All right. Cancel this event if, the, if it occurs on a holiday. All right. In that case, we'll just leave it off because we want it to happen every week. But that's a nice little feature when you have something that repeats. And also, if we had set it up here to repeat on the date of the of the month, 
let's say it's on the 20th, you know, uh, 28th, and then it happens to be on the fifth week of the month, but really we want it on the fourth week, it'll move it back for us. Play around with those. If That might be just a rare option that you'll never, ever use. But if you're having a problem with, uh, with the event, we have a lot of different options to choose from. So keep playing around. Last but not least, we get to save the event. So there we go. We have saved the event. And now if we scroll all the way down, you'll be able to see all the events that we have here. So um, I do not see. Oh, there it is. Band practice. Save event. Here we go. There's our new band practice right there. And of course, as you can tell, when I roll over it, you'll notice the very bottom it says google.com. It'll go to google.com if, uh, if we click on that. So, I also have it underneath the category of music, which means it should show up on our music page. Here's our choir. Let's hit refresh. And now you will see band practice. This is the long description that we gave it. This is the short description we gave it. We're going to have it in the choir room. Gives the address, a map to there, and we also can go to the website there as well if we need to. Anyway, this is how we set up uh, an event.